Well, good to see you this morning and uh, glad that we could come together and open up God's Word and be encouraged by it, be uh, exhorted, maybe rebuked, and the Lord may, may have His way in our hearts this morning. I pray that you've prayed and asked God to help you, uh, that we today would be changed by His Word. It wouldn't be a shame, would it not be a shame if we just left this morning the way we came in? Uh, that we've just uh, walked out just the same way as we walked in, haven't received a blessing. And uh, I want you to know the problem will not be in the seed of God's Word. Uh, the seed of God's Word is a good seed. It's a powerful seed. It transforms lives. I think what it is many times is we have not prepared ourselves. We have not come uh, with the anticipation of a blessing or saying, God, would you sow the seed of God's word in my life and help me to be transformed, help me to be changed. And Lord, I don't want to be the same. I want to be more like Christ. And if you ask the Lord to help you, the Spirit of God this morning is able to minister grace and truth to our hearts that we would be different people to the glory of God. If you have your Bibles, turn with me this morning to 2 Corinthians chapter 10. And I want to bring a message this morning uh, titled, uh, Capture Your Thinking, uh, Capture Your Thoughts Before They Capture You. Guys, my mic is still not right. Uh, it's very distracting for me. Can you just kind of put it down a little bit? Uh, it's just very distracting right now. Uh, capture, capture your thoughts before they capture you. And uh, this is what we want to look at this morning. How, how can we learn to capture our thinking? How could we, you know, many of us obviously have experienced uh, in our life at some point, if not even right now, even right now that you having some thoughts that are racing through your mind uh, and some thoughts that are maybe distracting, some thoughts that are, uh, you know, like, uh, where should I be? Uh, you know, I'm disengaged already. Uh, but I want you to just uh, uh, take a moment to clear your mind and say, I want to be here in the moment. I want to be here to listen to God's word. I want God to speak to me. And uh, we need to get to learn how to control our thinking, captivate and capture our thoughts. Because if we don't capture them, they will capture us. And uh, they will then uh, uh, take root in our hearts and take root in our minds. And, and they begin to become a stronghold in our life. If you think about a lot of our, our actions and decision making and value systems that we uh, sub subscribe to, it's all because of the thinking, the thoughts that have gone in our minds and in our heads. Right now, you're thinking about something. I want you just to think about God and about His Word and allow the Spirit of God to transform and to change you. You know, unchecked thoughts will develop into strongholds in our lives. And, and uh, I'm, not about, I'm not sure about you, but uh, sometimes I have been limited or I have felt limited uh, by the way I have thought or I have felt. And, and these uh, uh, thoughts that are so prevailing in my life uh, kind of inhibit, restrict, or make me doubt as to how, what, how I can trust God or how I can step up by faith or how I can live to please the Lord. I'm not sure, but, uh, I'm, sh uh, but I'm sure that you have also experienced these things in your life. Strongholds are fortresses that are built uh, by deceptive thought patterns uh, and feelings. And, and these things that work up in our minds and they become very real. They become real to us. Uh, but let me just say, not every thought and not every feeling is real. Sometimes we, uh, we feel in a particular way and we, we think that's what life really is or we think in a thought pattern and, and believe that this is to be real. But let me tell you, so our heart is deceptive and uh, our mind can play games on us and not everything that we think about and everything that we feel is real. And so today we need to learn about these strongholds and how are we to bring them down? Uh, how are we to uh, be persuaded? How, how, what are the actions or what are the steps to be taken in order to overcome and demolish these kind of thoughts in our life that, that have formed strongholds? And uh, we just, uh, we've tried different things, haven't we? We've tried different uh, uh, tactics, we've tried different solutions, tried to control our mind, tried to control our thinking, but we feel like uh, we have not been able to subdue it, uh, we have not been able to overcome it. I don't know about you, but you know, my, my mind, sometimes I wonder where those thoughts come from, don't you? 
and sometimes I wonder how, where did that thought ever come from? And how, how it has just distracted me in the moment of when I should be worshipping or when maybe I should be enjoying the fellowship of someone. And these thoughts that come through, we need to learn how to deal with them and how to restrict them, how to restrain them, capture them and deal with them according to God's word. And let me just say today, there is an answer in God's word. Amen. Uh, there is hope in Jesus Christ. Uh, there's hope for you. There's hope for me that we could capture our thinking and uh, bring it into obedience to Jesus Christ. Well, our text this morning is 2 Corinthians chapter 10. And if you're able, let's stand to read God's word. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, and we'll read verse 3 through to verse 6. The Bible says, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ, and having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. And the Lord add his blessing to the reading of his word this morning. Let's pray. Father, we just desperately need you at this time. Help us over the next few moments, Lord, that we will not be distracted, that the wicked one will not rob us of the good seed of your word. But Lord, may you find good soil, good ground today in our hearts, that it would flourish and bring forward much fruit. Lord, we ask you that you transform our thinking, renew our minds, and help us, Lord, to have victory in our thought lives. And we thank you now in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. Well, let me give you a bit of context around uh, this passage uh, that we just read this morning. Uh, Paul, in the book of uh, Corinthians, uh, uh, is, defending, is defending his position as an apostle. Uh, there were Judaizers who had come into the church there at Corinth and uh, were trying to persuade the thinking of the church members to say to them, well, really, Paul is not really an apostle. And, and Paul's methods are very worldly and very fleshly. And, and we don't need to follow him uh, and follow what he's trying to say to you. Uh, reality is, if you want to be a Christian, you must follow the Jewish faith. You, you must keep the law. And, and by that, then you can obtain salvation. Paul writes a letter here trying to uh, correct that kind of thinking, correct well, what is happening in the church. And, and, and so he begins uh, and to say that uh, in, verse, in, in verse 1, Now I, Paul, myself beseech you by the meekness and gentleness of Christ, who in presence am base among you, but being absent and bold towards you. But I beseech you that I may not be bold when I am present with that confidence, wherewith I think to be bold against some which think of us as we walk according to the flesh. And what he was saying here is, listen, I'm writing to you, and I'm, I, you know, some people are saying that when I write, I write harshly, I'm bold, I, I write some things that are very hard to listen to, but when I'm in, presen in your presence, I'm timid, and I'm passive, and I, I'm quiet, but I, I want you to know that I would just, I'm doing this just to be gentle among you, uh, to be gentle in helping and correcting the things that are in the church. You know, that's one thing that a pastor needs to be. Uh, we ought not to be harsh. Uh, we ought not to be judgmental. Uh, but we need to be gentle as Jesus was gentle. And we need to be gentle with one another too. We need to give each other some space. Uh, we need to have the benefit of the doubt. Don't be too quick to judge another brother or sister. Have the benefit of the doubt. And be gentle in how we deal with matters amongst one another. But Paul, he writes and says, listen, I want to tell you this, that I may be writing in boldness towards you, but I want you to know this, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. I am a human just like you, but our preaching, our Christian living is not carnal, it is not fleshly, it is not worldly. And I want you to know that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal either. Uh, the weapons of our, of our life, in our Christian life, are not fleshly methods, are not uh, strategies that we take uh, that are just worldly in their example. No, we have weapons that are mighty through God. And to the pulling down of these strongholds. 
He says, yeah, I know that some people are saying things about me. I know some people are trying to change your thinking and, and uh, get a, a hold on the way you think and, and persuade you that you will walk away from me and my doctrine. But I want to tell you something, that the Lord has great power and we're going to live according to that power. We're going to use the power of God to help us to bring down these, str- these strongholds. Now, Paul uses a methodology here that is uh, identified uh, with military strategy uh, used in that time. Uh, they would identify the enemy. They would demolish the enemy's stronghold. So they might be in a city with great fortifications of walls. And so they will identify the enemy where their strength and weakness is. They will, they will try to demolish the walls. And, and then they will take uh, some of their enemies. They'll subdue them into obedience and take them into captivity. And those who rebel and those who reject, uh, well, they will be punished. And those who don't comply, they will be punished. And so Paul is using this kind of uh, imagery here to help us understand how do we deal with a stronghold? How do we deal with these thoughts that have just been developed in our minds and have attached to our feelings and have become so prevalent and dominant in our life uh, that they've become a fortified a fortress uh, that we've struggled to overcome, that we struggle to break out of and, and be freed and liberated from? So Paul gives us in this passage what he believes is the practical application to helping us to overcome these thoughts, to overcome this kind of thinking. Hey, have you tried different methods? I know we did a first aid training a couple of weeks ago uh, for two Saturdays. And uh, we learned about, uh, you know, the mind and the different, uh, different ailments. Uh, you got people who suffer with anxiety, those who suffer with depression, uh, those who are suicidal in their thinking, and, uh, you know, different various emotions that are attached to the wrong thinking. And uh, just learning how to deal with those things, how to, how to help someone, how to, how to ask the right question, how, how to be direct in knowing how to help them. But I want you today to learn that God is able to give you a greater power power than these methodologies. God is able to give us strength and use what he has empowered us by the Holy Spirit to overcome some of these negative thoughts that we are uh, living by or they have captured us. Uh, They have uh, taken a masterful position over us and we want to learn. We want to learn today through God's help and through the word of God how we can overcome these strongholds in our lives. Well, let's identify the strongholds that we may be struggling with. Well, strongholds are formed through our thoughts and imaginations. Uh, and uh, they can be very real. Uh, they may bear out in our lives. And, and, uh, and the Bible gives us examples of these. If you, if you look with me in Genesis 32, we find that, uh, that Jacob, when he was coming back, remember the story, Jacob, when he's returning back to his home country, he finds out that Esau, with his 400 men, have come to meet him. Right? They're going to they're gonna, they're gonna meet him at some point, and so he is fearful about what is taking place. Have a look with me in verses 3 to 8. The Bible says this, And Jacob sent messengers before him to Esau, his brother, unto the land of Seir, the country of Edom. And he commanded them, saying, Thus shall ye speak unto my lord Esau. Thy servant Jacob saith thus, I have sojourned with Laban and stayed there until now. And I have oxen and asses, flocks and men servants and women servants. And I have sent to tell my Lord that I may find grace in thy sight. And verse 6, And the messengers returned to Jacob, saying, We came to thy brother Esau also. He cometh to meet thee and four hundred men with him. Verse number 7, Then Jacob was greatly afraid and distressed and he divided the people that was with him and the flocks and herds and the camels into two bands and said if Esau come to the one company and smite it then the other company which is left shall escape 
Uh, I want you to go down to chapter 3, verses 1 to 4. And Jacob lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, Esau came, and with him 400 men. And he divided the children unto Leah, and unto Rachel, and unto the two handmaids. And he put the handmaids and their children in the former, so that is, at the front, and Leah and her children after, and Rachel and Joseph in the Hittimalist. And, and he passed over before them and bowed himself to the ground seven times until he came near to his brother. To, to, to Esau, uh, his brother. So uh, I want you to see uh, Jacob was captivated. His mind and his imagination and the thinking uh, of that time was filled with fear. Uh, how am I going to face Esau? Remember the story? I, I took from him the birthright. I deceived him by taking the birthright and I've run away. It's been 20 years now. At uh, 20 years, I'm going to meet him for the first time. I wonder what that is going to be like. And that fear struck his heart. And his imaginations began to fill about all the things that Esau was going to do to him for what, how he deceived him. And so he began to devise strategies. Uh, he sent gifts upon gifts in front just to pacify Esau. And then when he heard that Esau was coming, uh, he, he said, okay, well, what am I going to do? I'm going to put the most valuable things to the end. So if he, if he attacks the one, at least we might survive the others. So who does he put forward? He puts forward the handmaidens. Remember, Leah gave him his ha her handmaid and, and Rachel gave, her, gave him her handmaid. And so he had children with them. So he put the handmaids up the front with their children. And then he put Leah with her children, and then he, lo he left Rachel, whom he loved, with Joseph at the end. And he went in front of them, trying to pacify his brother. Some of our imaginations and fears, you know, we build them up in our minds, and they may not be real, they may not be what actually transpires. Because in fact, when we read this text about Jacob, when he gets to see Esau, Esau's just so happy to see his brother. He says, I don't need all your gifts. God has blessed me tremendously. I'm just so glad that I got to see you. And so sometimes we play out some things in our minds and, and we would think of the worst and we, we, we we're afraid and our feelings and our emotions are involved that, that we start to do certain things that may not be necessary. And so here we want to know that these are strongholds. This kind of fear is a stronghold that God wants to deliver us from. God wants to give us victory over. And God wants to do mighty work in renewing our thinking. I want to give you another example. Uh, have a look with me in 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel chapter 27. Remember, Saul was chasing David for many years. David was a, uh, uh, a fugitive. He was running from Saul. Saul was a chasing him to kill him and uh, David gets to this point in his life thinking is this ever going to end is this chase ever going to stop uh, surely uh, I'm going to be uh, I'm going to be destroyed by Saul look what he says in in chapter 27 1 Samuel 27 verse 1 and David said in his heart I shall now perish one day by the hand of Saul there is nothing better for me than that I should speedily escape into the land of the Philistines, and Saul shall despair of me to seek me any more in my coast of Israel. So shall I escape out of his hand. David, a mighty warrior, now fear grips his heart and says, how long can I keep going this way? How long can I continue running away from Saul? Uh, Lord, I, I, how long is this going to be? You know what? The best thing for me is to go and live with the Philistines. Imagine, imagine David making that decision, that choice. I mean, all of his life was warring against the Philistines. All his life was he killed Goliath, and, and then his mighty men killed all his brothers. And there was constant uh, trouble and, and fighting with the Philistines. Now, in his fear of losing his life, he, he says, you know what, my best thing is to escape out of the hand of Saul, I will just go live with the Philistines. It's amazing how when our imaginations and our thoughts get a hold of us, that we can make some irrational decisions, can't we? And we can make some choices that are not in our best interest, nor are they in the best interest of our family or our children, or even as a church family. Uh, you know, these strongholds are quite important to be identified and to be dealt with. Because they have consequences in the way we live. And so here Paul in, 1 Corinthians, in 2 Corinthians chapter 10 is identifying those uh, who have caused this incorrect thinking and, and wants to deal with it. And wants to deal with it. 
that strongholds that are formed need to be dealt with. And we cannot just let them r have dominion. We can't let them captivate us because if we don't capture them, they will capture us. Now, what are some of the strongholds in your life and in my life today? Maybe you may have a stronghold of pride today. Maybe today you think of yourself as being righteous. Maybe today you think, well, I don't do anything wrong. I'm not really that bad. I'm a good person. I'm intelligent. I'm success, successful. I, I have. A, I, I make a good wage. I make some good money. I've got some. You know, I've, I've got some uh, options in my life. And uh, and uh, you begin to think about who you are and elevate yourself. You know, pride is one of the biggest obstacles to men and women coming to know Jesus Christ as their personal savior. God, do you know God hates pride? Pride goes before a fall. And I hold his spirit before destruction. God hates the proud. God hates it when we have an elevated uh, uh, thought of ourselves and who we are and what we think we are. You know, God hates those who are proud. But he draws nigh to those who are contrite and humble in spirit. One of the biggest strongholds I see in men and women today is pride. You know what? Pride in their religious behavior. And they believe, well, you know what, I've been, I've been religious, uh, I've been following this denomination, or I've been following uh, this particular thinking, or, or this particular kind of religion uh, for all my life, and my father followed it, my grandfather followed it, my great-grandfather followed it, and uh, we have a whole line of ancestry who were of this denomination and of this persuasion, and uh, don't come and tell me that I need to change pride in religious activity. Pride in your denomination, pride in your inheritance and your, and your heritage. Pride. Pride today can stop you from receiving the blessing of God. Did you know that? Pride today in your life can keep you out of the kingdom of God because you will not humble yourself and recognize that you're a sinner and you need Jesus Christ to save you. Pride. Pride comes in various forms. It comes in various forms. You don't have to be outspoken. You don't have to just, you know, uh, show off all the things that you have and, and talk about how great you are. No, sometimes we are, prou we are proud in our humility. You understand what I'm saying? Oh, I, I, I gave them what was mine. Oh, I let them have it. But what are you talking, why are you saying that for? Well, I just want to show you how good I am because I humbled myself and let them go first. It's pride. Pride comes in many ways. And when we allow those thoughts of, of esteeming ourselves greater than what we should, Paul, the Word of God says, be careful. Be careful that you don't think of yourself more highly than what you should. Uh, because, uh, uh, you know, that will, uh, you, you, you would have a greater fall. So pride, pride could be a stronghold in your life even today. Maybe it's not pride, but maybe it's insecurities. Maybe today you're feeling very insecure and you say, well, you know what, I can't do that. I can't be like him. I've heard people say, you know, I, I can't, I, I can't get up and speak and do public speaking. Or we've convinced ourselves of things that we can't do. I, I can't, I, I can't just uh, uh, be, uh, I, I'm not good enough uh, to do this. Or it doesn't matter how much I try, I, I will never be able to. I, I'm always a failure at things. We have insecurities, don't we? And uh, when we begin to think that way, it limits us, doesn't it? Uh, you know what happens with some people? that They quit before they start. You, you know, we, 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 we see it all the time. We see it where people, you know, sign up. They're so excited. They want to study a class. They want to study, you know, at, with our institute. And, and as soon as you give them the material and they look at it and say, oh, I can't do that. Oh, I, I, I will never finish that. And so we have insecurities about what we can and what we can't do. And, and those thoughts and those emotions uh, captivate us and limit us because we begin to believe really we cannot do this. Or I'm not good enough for this. Or uh, you, they will never pick me. Uh, you know, I'm not that good. They're not, they're not going to have me on their team. Or she'll never look at me. Look at me. Or he'll never look at me. Look at me. 
And so we live in these insecurities, these worlds of insecurities that have become stronghold in our life. Maybe you're not suffering with a stronghold of insecurity, but maybe today you might have fear. Fear may be your stronghold this morning. You might have fear, anxiousness, always worried about the future, always worried about what will happen next, and, uh, and uh, you're always thinking, considering, you know, when your kids go out, you, you, you cannot sit still, your mind is always racing, and you're thinking about the worst thing that can possibly happen to your children when they're out. You know what I'm talking about, mothers? We have fear. We're anxious. We have anxieties uh, over things that we cannot control and, and uh, our mind begins to convince us uh, uh, that, we, uh, that these things are going to happen and we worry over them. And, uh, we, and if there's something that we cannot control, if I can't control it, I can't control the outcome, we become very anxious, don't we? We become very anxious about how this thing was going to turn out. Anxiety is so prevalent in society today. And let me, may I say, it's, anxiety is real and, and it's very prevalent with Christian people as well. I want you to know that, you know, all these kind of things are, are rooted in fear and God has not given us the spirit of fear but of power and of a sound mind and, and of love and God wants to renew us and help us. God wants to help you. God doesn't want you to willow uh, in your strongholds and have them captivate you and uh, deliberate you and limit you in living life for him. You may have today a stronghold of fear. Maybe today you might have a stronghold of uh, your physical outlook. You look at yourself in the mirror and you don't like your body. You look at yourself, you I don't like my face. I don't like my nose, I don't like my lips, I don't like my arms, and, and uh, you become obsessed by your appearance. You ever seen these guys that go to the gym? What are they obsessed with? They're obsessed with their physical, with their physique, what they look like. You know, they stand before the mirror and go, <laughs> you know, I don't even have to do that, I just like the way I look. I stand before the mirror every morning, look at myself and say, boy, you're a good looking guy. <laughs> See, people have some strongholds about their physical shape and what they look like. And some of us go to some extremes, don't we? Uh, some of us go to some extremes just to change the way we look and what our body looks like so that we could be settled in our own mind to be happy with how God created us. It's a stronghold. It's a stronghold. Today, you may have uh, that physical stronghold uh, uh, of your physical body in your mind. Uh, some of us have a spiritual stronghold. What I mean by that is we find it difficult to trust God. We say we love God. We say he's an almighty God, but we really have a difficulty trusting him. We have a difficulty in uh, just laying it out and leaving it in his hands and saying, Lord, you're able to deal with this for me. Uh, it may be, hey, it may be in your finances. It may be in your finances and, and you're struggling, wondering, is God ever really going to help me? Is God ever going to provide for me? Is God really going to look after me as his son or daughter? And, you know, some of us, some of us have not even began to learn to give sacrificially to the Lord's work because you know why? We don't believe, we don't really believe that he can fill our bag and supply all our needs. You know, it's a stronghold. It's a stronghold in our mind. I don't know how this is going to work out. Unless I see it first, unless I see God do something, then I will follow in my obedience. Listen, God never said it would work that way. God said, you trust me, you obey me, and then the blessing will follow. Sometimes we might have a spiritual stronghold in our life, and, and uh, we, we think that uh, uh, this stronghold sometimes uh, uh, prohibits or limits our ability to receive God's word. Sometimes we sit here and we think, uh, you, you know, I've heard that all before. Oh, I've heard that text before. Oh, I've heard somebody else preach that before. And, and in that in that thinking we limit what God can do. Maybe today you may be struggling with some kind of spiritual stronghold in your life. 
How about relationships? Some people have difficulties or a stronghold that, that they just can't, they just can't trust another person. You know what, I, I've been hurt before and uh, they've hurt me, they've said some things about me, and, and uh, they were supposed to be the closest people to me, and, and because they hurt me, uh, uh, these emotions, these thoughts that are, right, that are in our minds now are so real that they become a stronghold that we have now withdrawn and, and will not relate with anybody else. You have a stronghold in your mind today that is limiting you from having a relationship. Oh, my husband hurt me, my wife hurt me, and I just can't seem to let go of it. And, and because of these thoughts and these emotions, are, uh, they have changed the dynamic of our relationship. A stronghold. A stronghold in our minds and in our lives that need to be demolished and broken down and victory to be won over through the power of the Lord Jesus Christ. Maybe today you have some kind of addictive stronghold. Maybe today you struggle with alcohol. Maybe today you struggle with some drugs, whether it's prescription or illegal, illicit drugs. You say, well, I just can't give it up. I can't give it up. I, I, you know, it just dominates my life and I don't know how to break free from it. Addictive strongholds. Maybe it's smoking. Maybe it's a sexual sin. Maybe it is even just being addicted to computer games. You know, we, I find it amazing today, we, we, we grow up in age, but we haven't grown up in, in our thinking. Uh, you can have a 40-year-old man who still sits and wants to play PlayStation. Now, I don't have anything against PlayStation, and I, I don't have a problem with you, in, you know, having a, a fun time together. But if all you can think about that, you know, I want to finish work and get home because I've got a game that I'm going to play, there's a problem. We're addicted to certain things, and these are strongholds in our lives. Maybe today you even have an addictive nature to eating. Do you think gluttony is a sin? Maybe we have a stronghold in our life about how much we consume. You see, uh, God wants to do some things in our life to liberate us. And it's so important today, if we're going to begin the process of having a victory over all of this, we must begin by identifying, I must identify the stronghold. I must give it a name. Because if I don't identify it and don't give it a name, this thing is just so lucid that I don't even know what it is and I can never tackle it and I never can overcome it. I think what we need today, as Paul has identified those who have spoken incorrectly and changed the thinking of people, I want us to identify. Today, take note. Go home and think. Maybe the Holy Spirit, even right now, is convincing you about a stronghold in your life. Name it and understand it, identify it, and then begin the process of dealing with it. Paul took an action towards these strongholds. I want you to see what he did. He says this, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God, to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. What we need to do is to take the step, an act of war, to demolish these strongholds. Uh, we need to attack these strongholds uh, with God's weapons. Proverbs 21, 22 says, A wise man scaleth the city of the mighty and casts down the strength of the, of the confidence thereof. He says that the mighty man will go towards it. He, he will go to chase it and to conquer it. A wise man attacks that city. And we should not be waiting around passively. There's a stronghold in your life today that the Spirit of God has identified for you. Do not sit passively and just wait and see what happens. Uh, we, we shouldn't just hope that something out of the blue can happen to eradicate it, to help us move on, to help us overcome it. Don't wait for it to go away. Don't think that time will make it better. And, uh, or don't even think that I will grow out of it. Listen, what we need to do by the power of God and, and the help of God is to go after it, go after that stronghold and to demolish it. Paul said 
that for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty through God to the pulling down of these strongholds. We need to examine and reject those thoughts. These thoughts uh, that are series in our minds uh, have evolved into an imagination and feeling and have captivated our minds into things which are untrue. We need to attack them. Uh, we ought not to just sit back and just let them have a field day in our minds. We ought to reject such thoughts. Remind ourselves that these are not real. Uh, examine the thought in light of the truth of God's word. And uh, what does God say about this thinking? What does God say about this thought? Uh, how, how would God deal with this? We need to attack it and, and do all our best in eradicating and demolishing these strongholds. Reject any thinking that elevates itself above God's word. And when you think to yourself that you excuse yourself to do something, to indulge in your sin or in your disobedience, and you say it's okay and your mind elevates itself above the word of God, no, no, you need to recognize that and say that is not that is not true. That is not in line with God's word. I am being disobedient right here. This is sin in my life and I need to cast it out. Often enough, we, we're so passive, we say, oh, it's okay. We'll just let it go through this time. And we don't know that these kind of thoughts have been developing over time and developing over time that becomes a stronghold in our mind that we then accept and say, well, I can't overcome this. I'm, I just can't do this and, and I can't go any, at this time and I can't do this anymore. And what it does is debilitates and limits us as Christians. God wants to help us overthrow these thoughts to destroy these strongholds. Now, what are these weapons of our warfare that are mighty through God? Well, Ephesians chapter 6 Write this reference down. We won't be able to read it all, but I want to summarize them to you. There is the belt of truth. The belt of truth is to help us realize and understand what is real and what is not real. And God's word will teach us what is truth. And Jesus said, sanctify them with thy truth. Thy word is truth. The word of God is truth and it will settle your mind and settle your feet to understand what is real and what is not real. The belt of truth. The breastplate of righteous living. That breastplate of righteousness is holy living. Uh, being holy, attending church, reading my Bible, and uh, living a separated life from the world. Uh, uh, this breastplate will help us settle our minds and settle our thinking so it won't take a stronghold. Shoes of witnessing. The gospel of peace. You know, if you get more involved in uh, telling people about the Lord, uh, your mind is just captivated by the opportunities to lead someone to Jesus Christ. Witnessing. The shield of faith. Taking steps of faith to defend against the darts of the devil. Believing God to be real and what he will do for you. The helmet of salvation. Understand that you're saved and, and that uh, not, Satan has no power over you. Uh, you are free in Jesus Christ and he is able to give you all power because all power is given to him that in heaven and in earth and he is able to deliver you. Have the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Know the word. Know the word of God. It will help you in times of tr great trouble. It will help you in the time when these thoughts are coming through that you can settle your mind on the word of God. That will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee, for he trusteth in thee. Learn to memorize, learn to meditate, learn to understand, learn how to use God's word in those difficult times. And lastly, pray. Pray. Pray that God will help you to overcome these strongholds. These are great weapons of, uh, that are mighty through God that will help us. But are we using these weapons? Are we learning how to use them to help us overcome these strongholds that are in our minds? We not only need to demolish these strongholds, but we need to subdue our thought life. We need to captivate our mind to only entertain thoughts that are in obedience to Christ. Uh, that is, a, if a thought comes through that is against the Lord and it's against his will and against his word, I, I must just chuck it out. I, I must not entertain it. I must not sit and ponder on it. I must recognize it, identify it, and know that it, is, it goes against God and against his will and against his word. And so therefore I should not entertain it and I should just let it go. And then I need to learn 
to begin to bend my mind to the things that please God. Next week, we'll talk more about how we will do that. But we need to learn to captivate our thinking life, renew our mind in light of God's word and recognize that wicked thinking has no place in our, in our mind. When a wrong thought comes through, capture it and interrogate it. Interrogate it. You know how they interrogate a terrorist when they capture him? Where did you come from? Identify where that thought come, came from. Sometimes it could be the wicked one. Sometimes we just give the wicked one too much credit, really, because some of those thoughts are not just from him. You know where they come from? They come also from our understanding and learning of the world that is around us, and we compromise with it. Sometimes our, that kind of wicked thinking that comes through and up is because of our own deceptive hearts. Did you know that? Your heart can conjure up things for you that it desires and what you want. Now listen, we need to identify that and uh, interrogate that thought of know where it's coming from. Uh, uh, also, name the sin that is associated with that thought. Uh, name the sin. Say, listen, if I, if I keep this thought right here and if I don't bring it into obedience to Jesus, this is the sin of adultery. Fellas? This is the sin of adultery. Young man, this is the sin of fornication. Young ladies, this is the sin of fornication. Uh, identify and tie it to a sin. Because when we tie it to a sin, it should help us stand up straight and be careful with what we're dealing with. Identify it. And then begin to think, well, ponder on how destructive is this going to be in my life? If I was to let this take hold of me, what extent of damage or destruction is it going to cause? Understand the power of sin. Understand that Satan wants to destroy you. Understand that if we just entertain this kind of thought life, it's not going to lead to a blessing. It's going to bring us down. It's going to destroy my life. And when we begin to recognize these things and capture them and bring them into obedience to Christ, we will learn we will learn to throw out that which is not pleasing to the Lord. I want to tell you this morning, we are not helpless victims or recipients of our thought life. Some of us sit there and say, I can't help it. That's just the way I am. No, God has given us victory through Jesus Christ. And through the weapons of our warfare, we're able to demolish strongholds and bring down every wicked imagination, the thought, and anything that exalts itself above Jesus Christ. He has given you that ability and that power to have the victory in your life. Lastly, I want you to see, Paul said this, verse 6, and having a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Be prepared to punish rebellion. What, I mean, what do I mean by that? Don't excuse yourself when you have failed in your, thinking, in your, in your thought life. Don't excuse yourself and say, oh, well, it's okay. Oh, I'll, I'll, I'll. No, no, don't excuse yourself. Uh, Paul, he was really saying uh, that uh, those who are going to obey and, and they're going to do what's right, well, praise the Lord, you're going to mature and, and you're going to bring fruit. But those who don't, well, we're going to deal with them. We're going to deal with those who, who do not comply, those who are continually to cause division in the church. I'm saying this to you. Don't just settle with your thought life and just say, well, that's just the way I am. I'm just a product of my environment. Uh, that's how God made me. No, no, don't excuse yourself. Don't excuse yourself when you had failure in your thinking. Or you've allowed strongholds to take advantage of your life. Now, don't excuse yourself, but deal with it. You know, Jesus said this word, said this, said in Mark 9, 47, And if thine eye offend thee, pluck it out. It is better for thee to enter into the kingdom of God with one eye than having two eyes and to be cast into hellfire. What is Jesus saying here? He's not saying physically go get a spoon and pluck your eye out. He's saying, take drastic action. Take drastic action when there is failure. Take drastic action. And my friend today, let me say this to you. Uh, if your thought life uh, uh, is uh, troubling you and there's a, there's a great stronghold upon you, then take some drastic actions physically. What do I mean by that? Stop watching that TV. Don't have so much time on the internet. If you can't handle your iPhone, then put it away when you come home. Put it away in the drawer. 
And don't leave yourself exposed to stuff that will that will damage your thinking, that will damage your mind, and, and your mind becomes a, 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 a cesspool for all this wicked stuff that is in the world. Take some drastic action. Come on. D- don't say, you're, well, you know what, I, I can't turn the TV off, but what about my kids? Listen, walk out of the room. Make sure you're ro- watching the right kind of stuff. What things are you listening to? What things are you watching in magazines? What are things are you watching on the internet? What are those things that you're entertaining and allowing your mind to be filled with? Because if you keep that happening, you're feeding that flesh and you're feeding that thought life and that thought life is just going to grow and grow and it's going to be a stronger a stronger force upon you, that stronghold, rather than you demolishing it, you're just building it up and you're building it up and you're building it up. And then it becomes so real for you that you will act upon it and it will bring destruction to your life. We need to capture our thinking before it captures us. And there is great power through the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said in John 10.10, I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Do you believe that? Do you believe that Jesus wants to give you a better life? God wants, he wants you to have a victorious life. Do you want the victory found in Jesus to help you demolish those strongholds this morning? I can you imagine what it would be like if we just leaned upon the word of God and leaned upon the power of God and leaned upon the weapons of our warfare to bring down these strongholds? Can you imagine what life would be like for us as Christians liberated from these strongholds, liberated from that kind of thinking, and we're useful in the hand of God and we're advancing and marching on and conquering for the cause of Christ? Can you imagine how much more effective we would be in this world if we just relied on our weapons of our warfare to demolish these strongholds that were built through our unrestrained thinking? What are you going to do about your strongholds today? What are you going to do with them? What are those strongholds? Have you identified them? The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations, that is thoughts, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, and then bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Can you bring your thought life in obedience to Jesus Christ? By the power of God, you can. By God's help, you can. But we, this morning, have been, have been exhorted into action. Each one of us this morning needs to go away and do something about our strongholds. Each one of us needs to do something about our thought life. Bring it into captivity, bend it, bend it, subdue it, in line with the Lord Jesus and his word and and he's able to liberate us. Let's rise up and attack our strongholds this morning with God's powerful weapons. For we are more than conquerors in Christ Jesus. We don't need to be subdued. We don't need to be captivated. We don't need to be captured by our thoughts that turn into great strongholds. You can have the victory this morning. Well, the Lord helping us next week. Uh, We will finalize uh, this series and as we've talked about uh, different ways that God wants to renew our thinking, uh, today we looked at how to reject those thoughts and how to recognize them, how to reject them, but Lord willing, next week will be our final installment and we want to talk about how to replace them. What should we replace those thoughts with? And the Word of God has the answer for that as well. Let's go to Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you this morning for your word and, and Lord, uh, its power and effectiveness. So I ask, Lord, that you do a work in us that only you could do. Lord, you know us through and through. You know each person here this morning and what the stronghold is in their life. God, I pray that you would give them the victory in Christ Jesus. And thank you, Lord, that you've given us weapons that are not carnal, they're not fleshly, but they're mighty through God. And Lord, I pray that we will learn today to recognize and identify our strongholds. Lord, to run and attack them and demolish them by your power and and by your grace and strength. And Lord, I pray that we would learn to subdue every thought and bring it into obedience to you. And 
Father, I pray that we would take some drastic action in limiting, in restraining our thought life. Lord, that we would be pure and useful to you. Lord, thank you that we have victory in Jesus. Bless these, your people, today. You know the need of each one. And as we leave, may we not forget what we learned that may be sown in our hearts to bear much fruit to your glory and honor. We thank you and we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen.